My name is Dr. Diane Miller. I'm the Division Head of Gynecologic Oncology at the University of British Columbia and the Chair of the British Columbia Provincial Gynecology Tumor Group. Over the course of my career, I have seen and operated on literally hundreds of women with high-grade serous cancers. I'm going to describe for you the aha moment that led to us as a group changing the way we think about this disease and I believe seeing what was before our eyes all the time. The explosion of knowledge in the field of genomics has led to the identification of mutations in two large genes called BRCA1 and BRCA2. Mutations in either of these genes leads to a woman having a high risk for the development of breast and ovarian cancer. Risk-reducing surgery in the form of a bilateral salpingo-oophorectomy was offered to decrease this risk for individual women identified as mutation carriers. Then a funny thing happened. Instead of identifying cancer precursors in the ovary, virtually all of the lesions were in the fallopian tube. The question was, could this also be true for the more common situation where the cancer occurs in women who are not carriers of a specific mutation? In the course of this talk, you will see a few images of fallopian tube cancers. In reality, since we started looking for it, we can recognize both clinically and, as you will see later, pathologically evidence for both fallopian tube involvement and origin for these cancers. We are asking you to believe that a cancer which is described even today in gynecology textbooks as being extremely rare and accounting for less than 1% of all gynecologic malignancies is actually conservatively responsible for over two-thirds of all pelvic high-grade serous tumors. When you have a new theory, the first thing you have to decide is that if that theory makes sense. I hope we are going to convince you that not only does the fallopian tube make sense, but that it makes more sense than the ovary ever did as a source for high-grade serous cancers. The fallopian tube is lined with malarian serous epithelium, making it a likely candidate for high-grade serous cancers. As well, the surface of the tube is folded, convoluted, and massive compared with the ovary, perhaps increasing the statistical probability of mutation. Extrapolating even further, we can begin to speculate on possible etiologies for this cancer. As you'll see later, many of the known epidemiologic correlations refer to the woman's menstrual history and to history related to upper genital tract infection or inflammation. We know that virtually every time we perform a laparoscopy during a woman's menses, there will be menstrual blood in the peritoneal cavity. What is in this menstrual blood? Well, it's loaded with all of the inflammatory cytokines we know are related to carcinogenesis in other sites. This diagram, which was drawn by one of our residents, illustrates the potential effects of inflammatory cytokines and infectious agents on the fallopian tube. In addition, it points out the previously unexplainable risk-reducing effect of tubal ligation through mechanical obstruction of the tube and protection of the fimbriated end from recurring inflammatory insults. Oral contraceptives and pregnancy both decrease menstrual flow and also decrease tubal motility, limiting the potential for retrograde menstruation. This slide summarizes what we know is true from epidemiological data. Pelvic inflammatory disease increases the risk of ovarian cancer and the risk increase correlates with the number of episodes of PID. Tubal infertility also increases the risk, perhaps related to occult tubal damage. As stated previously, tubal ligation, oral contraceptives, and pregnancy all decrease the risk of high-grade serous cancers. Why is this important? It's important because this gives us a huge opportunity to prevent many of these cancers. In the United States, 30% of women undergo a hysterectomy in their lifetime. Many of the procedures are performed premenopausally for benign indications. The standard surgical procedure means that over 50% have the ovaries and fimbriated end of the tube left in situ. 18% of patients in our own British Columbia Cheryl Brown Ovarian Cancer Outcomes database had a hysterectomy prior to their diagnosis. 
conservatively, one in five women who are diagnosed with high-grade serous cancers in British Columbia will have a germline BRCA mutation identified. An estimated further 30% of patients will undergo a tubal ligation. There are three elements to the control of cancer. There is currently no effective screen for high-grade serous cancers, nor is there likely to be one in the near future. In Dr. Swenerton's presentation, you see that the gains related to treatment have been modest at best. Our best hope to decrease the burden of this disease currently lies in prevention. The question is, can we prevent it? We believe through changing the way we perform common gynecological procedures, we have the potential of significantly decreasing the incidence of this relatively common and most often lethal disease. The fimbriated end of the fallopian tube is the precursor. Therefore, we should remove the precursor. We propose removing the fallopian tube, including the fimbriated end, at the time of any hysterectomy. Removing the tube has the advantage of decreasing the risk of this cancer without affecting the hormonal state of the woman. Performing salpingectomy in place of tubal ligation, at least in women over the age of 30, as the majority of patients over age 30 will have IVF rather than tubal reversal if they wish to conceive. Further, we recommend genetic counseling and screening for BRCA mutations in all women with high-grade serous carcinomas to identify mutations. By adopting these simple changes in practice, we have the ability, conservatively, to decrease the incidence and mortality from this ovarian cancer up to 50% up to 10% through salpingectomy at the time of hysterectomy, up to 20% through salpingectomy instead of tubal ligation, and up to 20% through risk-reducing surgery in patients with BRCA mutations. Thank you.